Ecclesiasticus chapter 2, verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai. All praises to the Father Yahweh in the name of the Son Yahweh Shai. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's whole four elect scattered abroad, teaching his word in sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right. You know, um, earlier today, even now, you know, you can feel the spirit, which a lot of people are, are getting very scared. You know, people calling me friends family and um asking me questions and what's gonna happen and you know now mind you uh certain people who called me knew and know that you know I teach the Bible and things of that nature but here it is they you know didn't want to hearken unto the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and um Brothers, you're going to have the same thing happening where family members who know of what you do, know that you're a prophet and you're a teacher, you know, they're going to be calling you and asking you for the answers, you know, wondering where you're going to go, you know, when all I could give you and tell you is, you know, it, it has to be of the Lord because, you know, we don't know where we're going to go. We don't know what we're going to do. All right. Now, that may seem stupid in the eyes of carnal men, you know, because you have no plan. You know, you're just going to be there and, you know, get caught up in the madness. We're not doomsday preppers, man, nor are we stockpiling on guns and that stupid shit, you know. But people are getting afraid. People are very scared. Now, today I knew it was the spirit of the Lord. A couple of people called me. And I mean back to back. That's why, you know, it drove me to do this show right now and to speak this word, you know, and to speak of this small testimony that I have today. All right. Of the spirit that's lingering around. And, um, you know, people are afraid. And why? Because just recently now here in New Jersey, they closed the liquor stores. <laughs> you know, the liquor stores are closed down. And I believe probably by tomorrow. Other neighboring um, cities around us is going to be also closed as well, you know, and I think closed indefinitely until uh, they saying what, April 1st? I think that's what somebody told me. They said until April 1st. But meanwhile, you know, everything is happening and it's getting more restriction each day that go by more. You know, I saw a post that the brother um, I'm a Wanga bar. He put up on how Chase Bank is um closing, you know? So the banks are closing. So people are getting wind of disinformation, you know, let me say two thirds, and they're getting afraid. <laughs> Very afraid. But for us brothers who have this truth, who have um repented, you know, and been worshiping and serving Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, there's no need for us because the Lord told us of these things. Matter of fact, before I read this, let me um let me get the scripture in uh first Thessalonians. Uh yeah. Oh, tripping. All right, first Thessalonians, the fifth chapter in verse one. It says, But of the times and of the season. And of the, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. All right. So the Lord already forewarned us. So when we was being made to look foolish in front of the people in the world. And when we were laughed at and when we were scoffed upon. We was misused, you know. Well, guess what? Now, now the fear is on you. All right. Because you didn't take heed to the warning 
which was given to you by the prophets of the Lord. All right. Starting with our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. All right. So it says, but of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you for yourselves. Know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. These things have to happen in order for the Lord to come. But meanwhile, while everyone is getting scared because now close, banks are closing, you know, eventually they will. Um, liquor stores are closing, you know, indefinitely as they will. Here it is. The Lord, they're not thinking about the Lord at all. They're thinking about how they're going to survive. And the only way you're going to survive is through Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. It says, verse 3, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon the woman with child, and they shall not escape. So because this coronavirus could possibly, and I'm going to say possibly, die down, don't think that you're in good case. Because guess what? All right, these Edomites are still... And are, and are going to force and mandate that mark of the beast, which is the RFID microchip. All right. So let me read again. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye brethren are not in darkness that that day shall overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of the light. And the children of the day, we are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. So that's what we're going to do. Watch and be sober. All right, because we're not of the night. We're not of the folly and the wickedness, you know, um, in this world. We're of the sober mind, man. We're of the serious mindset and watching and, and um seeing what the Lord is going to say unto us through his prophecies. So it says, verse 7, For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Now check this out. The men of the Lord, we've been, all right, been put on the breastplate of faith and love. When we first acknowledged that this was the truth and we walked in it and the Lord supped with us, taught us, labored with us, strengthened us, you know, he broke us down, then he built you back up. You know, we've been put on the breastplate of faith and love. Now you got individuals that are looking to put on that breastplate in faith and love, you know, but guess what? Is only because they're in fear. It's not because they believe. At this point, people are gonna want to believe. People are gonna want to. People are gonna act like they believe. You know, than they actually do, because of out of fear. But let me not get it. Let's not get it twisted. There will be some that truly believe, and they're gonna be delivered though. All right. So it says, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate. Of faith and love and for an helmet the hope of salvation all right because this truth is our hope without this truth we're hopeless but we're not of the hopeless we're hope we, we are hopeful all right hopeful of what salvation from yahweh yahweh bashim yahweh shai <laughs> that we'll be delivered in this time man because why we stood stiffly for the name of the lord you see why it's important that when you heard of this truth, you should have walked in it, you know, and not procrastinate. You know, that's leading me to a quick precept in um, Sirach, the fifth chapter, you know. Matter of fact, I'm going to get that real quick. And I'll come back to this. Um, let's get that real quick. Uh, Sirach, well, Ecclesiastica is also known as Sirach in the Apocrypha. And this is the fifth chapter, and I started the first verse. Set thy heart. Upon thou goods, and say not, I have enough for my life. Follow not thy own mind and thou strength to walk in the ways of thy heart. And say not, who shall control me for my works? For the Lord will surely revenge thy pride. 
for uh, say not, I have sinned and what harm have happened unto me? For the Lord is long suffering. He will in no wise let thee go. Concerning propitiation, be not without fear to add sin unto sin. Here's the point. And say not his mercy is great. He will be pacified for the multitude of my sins. For mercy and wrath come from him and his indignation resteth upon sinners. Now here's the point. Verse 7. So I get it. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and punished in a day of vengeance. All right. All right. So I get for that. Let me read the scripture one more time. I had to take a quick pause. Uh, verse seven. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord. And put not off from day to day, for suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. All right. So the point is, you shouldn't have made tarrying to turn to the Lord. And now all of a sudden you in fear because you can actually see the vision now. You can see what the prophets were speaking about before you brushed it off. You strudged your head, you know, you made mockery. You know, uh, uh, about brothers and what they were speaking about. You tried to make light of what, what was being said, which is the word. So it says, make no turn to turn to the Lord and put out, put not off from day to day. Because why? For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. And that's what's coming. The wrath of the Lord. Now, the wrath of the Lord can come through, come, come by the way of the sword, which is who is that sword? Esau. All right. Famine, all right, um, pestilences, uh, uh, death, all right, teeth of wild beasts. The, this is the wrath of the Lord, all right. And thou security, thou shalt be destroyed and perish in a day of vengeance. You see, and that's what we're approaching a day of vengeance. Maybe I'll title the video that, uh, the pet and perish in a day of vengeance. Because we're truly approaching the Lord's uh, day of vengeance. All right. So let me um, get back to 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. And uh, just finish this up real quick. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 8, uh, 9. For the Most High have not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord, Yahweh Shah, Mashiach. So you see, it's not for us to go out with a blaze and go out there gunfire and shooting. and No, the Lord... He said, it says, uh, for the most high have not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation from our Lord, Yahweh Shai. All right. So the point of the elect and what they're doing, watching and being sober is to what? To obtain that salvation that the Lord promised us. All right. So um, let me go back into the original topic uh, chapter, which is Ecclesiastes 2 and 1. Now it says, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in the time of trouble. And we're approaching the time of trouble, which is actually Jacob's trouble. You know, like I said, every day it seems to get more worse here, you know, and that's a good thing. All right. It says, cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. So, so. And more than ever now, we have to uh, hold on to the Lord even tighter, you know, stand by the Lord's side, getting more uh, closer to the Lord, you know, than any other time, man. All right. It says, uh, cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. You know, because everybody is going to be changed into a low state. Matter of fact, let me um, just want to do a quick Google search. See what that means.
All right, I had to um, just put the word East State in there. And this is a quick Google search for East State. It says, an intensive area of land in a country, usually with a large house owned by one person, family, or organization. Now, the scriptures say we, we, you will be changed into a low East State. All right? Meaning you're going to be what? A low land. It says, all money and property owned by a particular person, especially at death. So, you know, you're going to be low. Matter of fact, let me see what this say. Marion Webster. State condition. All right. So his state represents the state and the condition. So we're going to be in a low state and a low condition. You know, not having everything that your heart wished for. You know. Very few resources. Shows who standing or ranking, especially of a high order, a social or political class, a degree, quality, nature, see, property, farm, plantation. So the point is, the state in this particular scripture is talking about the condition, all right, in the state that you're in. So. It says, um, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low state. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. And that's what we're going through, man. We're going to have to go through the fire. All right. And basically the adversity. It says acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So if we can get through this fire, hey, may the most high count us as pieces of gold, man. All right. It says, believe in him and he will help thee. All of thy way of right and trust in him. So now better it's more now than ever to trust in the Lord, man. And we haven't even um really we haven't even went through it yet. You know, you won't see videos like this anymore when we're going through it. You know, this is the end, man. You know, this is the end of Esau's kingdom. Even if this place do seem to calm down and they cut things back on, remember what the scriptures say. They shall seek peace, but there shall be none. All right. So it says, believe in him. And who is that him? That's Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And he will help thee. You're going to, man, we're really, you know, look, man. You're going to have to believe in the Lord. This is really a test of all our faiths. You know, you're going to have to believe in the Lord. So, you know, you got, like I said in the beginning of this video, people are calling me, trying to figure out. What I'm going to do and, you know, where I'm going to be. And, you know, they want me to give them soothing words to help them. Well, listen, if the Lord ain't with you, I can do nothing for you. All right. All I can tell you is believe in him and he will help thee. Order thy way upright and trust in him. And if you can't take that, then that's on you, man. You know, anyway, verse seven. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy and go not aside, lest you fall. Ye that fear the Lord, believe him, and your reward shall not fail. Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good, and for everlasting joy and mercy. Look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long suffering and very pitiful, and forgiveth sins and saveth in the time of trouble. All right. Woe be unto the fearful hearts and faint hands and sinners that go of two ways. Woe unto him that is faint hearted, for he believeth not. Therefore shall he not be defended. And it's all about being defended by Yahweh Basham Yahushai. So for those who got faint hearted, who fell short, who believed at one point, but now they went back into the world. You know, they stopped praying. They stopped doing the works. Well, the Lord said, for he believeth not. All right. Because he don't believe anymore. It says, therefore, shall he not be defended? So all you fallout boys, shame on you. Woe unto you that have lost patience. And what will you do when the Lord shall visit you? And the Lord is going to visit each and every one of us. All right. He's going to visit each and every one of us because the scriptures say we're going to be judged in the flesh 
We're going to be judged for whatever we've done in the flesh, whether good or evil, roughly paraphrasing. All right. You're going to be judged, man. You're either going to receive a righteous reward or you're going to receive a wicked man's reward. Verse 15. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word and they that love him will keep his ways. They that fear the Lord will seek that which will which is well pleasing unto him and they that love him shall be filled with the law. So it was all about rehearsing and right rehearsing the righteous acts and keeping of the way the law the way of excuse me and keeping of the Lord's laws. It was a must that you recompense, man. Excuse me, you re you repent it. So like yeah. It was a must that you repented and put away the old man. All right. Verse 17. They that fear the Lord will prepare their hearts and humble their souls in his sight, saying, We will fall into the hands of the Lord and not into the hands of men. For as his majesty is, so is his mercy. All right. So, you know, I hope this lesson was edifying. I just did it in the spirit because there was a lot of phone calls and, you know, people contacting me trying to figure out what it is is that they're going to do and i can't help you you know all i could do is give you the word because honestly i can't help myself the lord has to help me all right and may the lord be with all the brethren start with our apostles and elders here at great millstone that been sincerely putting out this truth and been sincerely putting their body as a living sacrifice and serving the lord man in all honesty and truth this is why we went, that's why we showed you we feared the Lord by being out there teaching his teaching his word, man. You know, you people looked at it as entertainment. Oh, these guys are entertainment. Look at them. It's funny. You're watching videos where demons are attacking us and we defending ourselves and you you laughing at the situation instead of getting the um the understanding of the situation and learning the word. But guess what? We're approaching Jacob's trouble, man. And I believe this is the beginning of it. You know, someone asks, should I uh, take this serious? Yeah. You know, me personally, I'm taking it like this is the end of the world. You damn right I am. Because ain't no telling. Ain't no telling. You know, now do I know that if this is going to be it for sure? No. But through the spirit, the spirit and power of the Lord and through his word, the Lord forewarned us these things. You know, what's happening now have never happened before in this world. According to our time in this world, all right, in this society, all right, this American, well, let me say, it's not just happening in America, it's happening around the world. So, yes, I'm taking it seriously, all right? You're damn right. Life is serious. It's not a joke, man. And I'm going to take it as this is the end, the end of this society until the Lord show otherwise. Because either way, the Lord told us to have patience and wait upon him. He said these prophecies are going to take his place. So, you know, you're damn right. You know, this is it, Lord willing. So with that, shalom.